So in the first part of this double section video, I focused a lot on this bottom area. There's some really good large sections that have built up there and they've really filled this bottom area out. And then I kind of moved up the puzzle a little bit and worked on a little bit of the water in order to try and sort of connect a lot of these birds and butterflies and things together. So that worked really well. But what I'd really like to do to kick things off in this video is just dig a little bit more deeply into this top area of the double section, which is all these trees, all the foliage, quite a few sort of vines and things, and really just try and connect together a lot of the sort of the bits that are still floating up here, the butterflies and dragonflies and things like that, and even the uh, monkeys, which aren't really connected to anything yet. So what I'm gonna do to start with is work on these two piles here which are the pink flowers, which are in this box, and the red flowers, which are in this box. So just having a look at the wee poster, the flowers tend to be concentrated on these sort of dangly bits here, and then we've got another one here and here and then here. So there's a few sort of sprinkled in between, but I'm liking that they're in kind of areas rather than scattered all the way across because I think that's just going to make it just that little bit easier to connect things together like for example if I can really get this bit together I can connect this monkey here to these guys who could then maybe connect to the top and then even all the way down to this bird that's just really going to help it um, come together quite nicely at the beginning of this video or at least that's the plan. So there aren't actually too many pieces here so I think what I'm going to do is start off by sorting by shape. I may have to move some of the pieces from this red pile into the pink because there's a few pieces where there's kind of more pink flower on it really than red so there's perhaps just been a bit of a miss sort but I'm going to sort by shape, keep them in their separate boxes and then just work on these dangly bits just one at a time. Probably start with the pinks because there's a definite pink area there and there and then when I've got rid of a lot of the pinks, I can start working on these reds. So that's how I'm going to start things off. I do have a lot of what's going on up here is these black kind of creepers and vines and tree trunks and things, which I do have a separate pile for. So I may keep those handy as well, just to maybe help pull things together. And I know there's a few of these in the leftover pile. Uh, of pieces as well so I might just dip in and out of those but largely I'm going to focus on these pieces to kick things off. Okay, so you can see I don't have that many pink and red flower pieces left and I don't have that many uh, dark pieces left either. Um, there's a few other bits there on pieces of paper that I've got. 
Um, a lot have gone in. It's been quite slow going because there's various different areas with these flowers and they're so little that, you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out which ones go in which part of the puzzle. But doing the pink flowers and, and the um, the dark pieces together have really helped me bring together quite a few wee sections up here. But I'm finding that there's a few pieces that I clearly don't have in these piles. And that is because I think they have, they are either in with these pieces that I've partially sorted, the green pieces, or they're in the green pieces that I just haven't sorted at all. <laughs> the ones I just kind of left because I was getting fed up of it. And only shuffling through these, I can see a lot of pieces where I know now roughly where they go or I know they belong to an animal or something like that. You know, there's bits of animal on them. Like that, that looks like it might be a bit of a lion. And I know for a fact I'm going to find as well pieces with some kind of branches and trees and things on. So for example, in this pile here that I've already sorted, a good big bit of tree there. I'm not quite sure why that ended up in this pile. But what I'm going to do is finish off these pink and red flowers as far as I can and those as far as I can, but mostly focusing on these. Once I've filled up all the flower sections as much as I possibly can, I'm going to move over to the greens. Now, you might say, but she said she was going to do those last. <laughs> well, plants change in this puzzle a lot, but I am going to do them last. All I'm doing here, um, after I've done those, is to just sort them. Just do a good resort shuffle through and I'm looking specifically for pieces with bits of animal on and pieces with bits of tree on like in there and the other thing I'm going to look out for are pieces that are this shape the pieces that are in the dividing lines of which you know I've got as many out in the pieces that I've done already but I haven't really even touched the green pieces yet so i'm going to go through them all and look for these as well so i'm looking for three things bits with animals on bits with trees on and bits that are this shape and then it'll be kind of a gap filling exercise and i reckon that'll be a quite a big gap filling exercise before i then i think possibly move on to the water or maybe a very specific section of the greens like maybe this section here or something or perhaps these types of leaves. It depends. It depends on how big the piles are once I've gone through all these. But definitely, that I'm not sure yet. That's still hazy in the plan. <laughs> but uh, definitely the next two steps of the plan are those. And then a sort. And then some gap filling. And we will take it from there and see how it goes.
Okay, I've done quite a lot of gap filling. I've organised quite a lot of pieces. I still have some um, tree pieces. Uh, I still have some flower pieces. And I have plenty of leftovers, but uh, most of the greens that are sorted out are now in amongst the leftovers, which are back down there on the floor. And I've managed to fill quite a lot of gaps. So, you know, I have got a lot of pieces in, but it, this going all around the puzzle all the time, I don't know. I, I kind of I feel like I want to just sit and work on um, a specific section again because um, it's sort of a bit, it's worrying me out a bit walking around this puzzle. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to make a start on some green pieces, which I said I wasn't going to do till last. Um, but I'm specifically going to target these pieces here and these pieces here which will largely, I think, make up this area of kind of pointy leaves all around the lions and above the lions. And then there's a few up here. And then there's kind of a bush with sort of pointy leaf uh, greenery up over here. So, and they're not huge, they're not huge piles of pieces. So I'm just, I know where they are. I can just sit on a chair and you know not be hurting my back bending over the puzzle and walking around it all the time and uh, i'm gonna just sit and i'm gonna work on those just now so i'm starting some greens should hopefully fill out a nice wee section and then i will take it from there no idea what i'm doing after that but we'll i'm sure i'll figure it out <laughs> Okay, so these pieces have gone in really well, really quickly, which I'm pleased about. And what's ended up happening is that I've also got quite a bit of these uh, areas complete. And these were another area, another bunch of pieces that I separated out that I knew sort of went around here. So, and it was only a small pile. So I grabbed those as well and I managed to get those in and a um, bit around here. That bit came together really nicely. There's definite, there's a definite kind of spraying outward sort of pattern to the grass. So I was able just to, you know, find the right area for the piece, depending on the direction the grass was kind of pointing. And that's come together really well as well. The only other place I've managed to fill out with this kind of leaf is around here. Um, so I'm almost finished with those pieces now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just see if I can just try and get a few more of these bits in. And then once I've slowed right down on that and I just can't find where they go, I'll just add those to the leftovers. And I wasn't certain what I was going to do next, but I'm thinking I might actually, I've been sort of buoyed by how well these green pieces went in. I might tackle another pile of greens and... There are still some unsorted greens, but I have largely sorted them all now. And I wondered about maybe giving this pile here a go, which I think mostly these are the ones where it's kind of like big sort of wide, shiny leaves. And a lot of them have this yellow kind of stem sort of running through them. And I think that most of those go around here. Um, just underneath these white flowers and there's a few above the white flowers and I really think that that is going to fill that area out and then again after that I don't know but I'm sure it will come to me I'm sure it will come to me as I'm building this bit and I'll decide from there
Okay, so I have now got a really good big section of greenery done here, uh, which you saw on the close-up. And I'm really pleased with how that's filled out, a um, little bit over there as well. So it's really, really helped to fill out this whole bottom section of the puzzle. And I was a little uncertain as to what to tackle next. I didn't know whether to tackle more green because the green has been coming together really nicely. But I sort of was feeling like I wanted to move on to the water and then I kind of was a bit put off because it would involve more sorting. <laughs> I couldn't really be bothered to sort. So what I ended up doing was I did a little bit of off camera gap filling. I just shuffled through my unsorted greens and I found a lot of uh, pieces here and there where I could just fill the gaps in. So I found a few pieces from this area. I found quite a lot of these pieces that are like from mossy rocks. So there's one here that I've um, filled out really nicely with the frog and the butterfly. There's some mossy rocks down there that I've filled out a bit. And another one just up there near the, ze the zebra. So, um, I have done some gap filling, I've done a little bit of sort of rummaging through some more of the greens, but I do think I am going to move on to the water pieces now. I've already done a little bit of sorting on the water pieces, so I've taken these ones I've sorted out, and these ones are pieces that are this kind of shade of blue, that mostly I think will go in this area of the puzzle, and some sort of down here. Maybe a few over there. It's mostly waterfalls over there, so there won't be too many, but I'm really, and what I'm going to do is I've got those, so I'm going to organise those by shape, and then I'm going to go through the remaining unsorted blues, which are here, and there aren't too many, sort of decent sized pile, but not too bad. And I'm going to go through and look for water pieces where the water's sort of still and flat and not moving in any way. So I'm not looking for waterfall pieces. I'm not looking for pieces with splashes and bubbles and, you know, that is kind of running over rocks and things like that. I'm not looking for water pieces like that. I'm really looking for water pieces like the ones I just showed you where the water's just still. So there's one there. I'll be picking out pieces like that. So my task now is to just do another sort on these, uh, add to this pile here, and then once I've got a good bunch to go at, I'm going to work largely on this middle section, areas of kind of still sort of flat water. And then uh, that will really fill out a lot of the middle, and it'll really just be waterfalls then, of which I've already sorted quite a few pieces. They're on a board down on the floor, there's a few waterfall pieces that I'll tackle then and I'll take it from there. It's very much a puzzle where I've just just never quite been sure of the plan, but I'm just letting it come to me, come to me as, as I go along and it seems to be coming together fairly well at that. So that's what I'm going to do just now, just a little bit more sorting. Okay, so you can see at this stage of the proceedings that I am starting to pull out some other piles of pieces. Every now and again, I'm pulling out my leftover board um, and I'm also pulling out uh, some green pieces that I had separated in a separate box um, of kind of mossy green pieces, which go on um, the mossy rocks underneath where the deer are standing and also where the lions are laid down. So what I actually start to, to do after I'd finished the water pieces, um, having seen just how much those water pieces had filled out, um, the bottom half of the puzzle was looking really, really filled out and almost done. Um, and I was just so keen to finish the bottom half of the puzzle. So what I did at this point was I got my mossy rock pieces and I filled out a good chunk of that gap underneath where the lions are. 
Um, I filled out a few more bits and pieces where the cheetah and the two deer are standing as well, as you can see here. So I really am at this point, I've sort of moved on from the water and I'm doing a lot of gap filling, but my focus is specifically on the bottom half of the puzzle. I was just so eager to get it uh, finished and completed. So that is what is going on just here. So this puzzle is very much working now from the bottom up. I still have just a few wee pieces to fill in at the bottom here. I think I'm down to 24 needed for the bottom half now, not that I'm counting. So now that I've done most of all the water pieces, this kind of third quarter going up from the bottom is really filling out which is leaving the most gappy area kind of at the top. So it's very much working from the bottom up. Bottom up. So now my plan is to work on some green pieces. And what I'm really looking to do, this area here around this white bird, and then some areas here of like this really light shade of green. There's a little bit over there. And this is just a tiny bit darker, but it's it's these open areas where these uh, vines are coming down, these bits of tree. And I've got kind of some of them in and some there, a little bit there and a little bit there. But I'm really needing to fill out all the bits around it now, and kind of the bits above this waterfall and just continuing to work my way up. But I've actually got those pieces separated out there aren't too many here they are in this box and i think there'll be some overlap here with some of the water pieces which are like really some of which are re really light in color like this and i perhaps couldn't figure out whether it was water or you know bits of kind of tree so i think there'll be some overlap with some of my leftover pieces and also the pieces that i still have to do that have these branches on um, there'll definitely be a box of pieces I dip in and out of as well. But they're all pieces that are sorted already. So my plan is to bring my chair over to this side of the puzzle, work on this bit. I need to do a little bit of reaching to get to the middle and then I'll do a little bit on that side as well. And I'm also going to bring the camera down a bit closer because now that I'm really just focusing on the top half, it kind of seems a bit pointless having this sky high view of things and I'd like to get just a little bit more close up to it, you know, so you can get a little bit more detail of the puzzle coming together. So I'm going to bring that camera down, put it on the tripod and really get working, filling this bit up and working my way upwards. And then it really will just be a case of doing these trees, which will involve the remaining green pieces, which again, they're still only partially sorted, but I think by the time I reach the, the very end of this puzzle, I think it's going to be a case of just putting the shapes in, sorting by shape, putting them in. But, you know, it won't be an area anywhere near as big in terms of green pieces as I had to do in section one. So I'm hopeful that that won't take too long. There's still some flower pieces to fill in, which hopefully will go in a bit quicker once I've got these areas filled out. So yeah, so there's a definite plan now. Any that I find that are still missing from the bottom here, I'll obviously throw in and try and get that finished off as well. 
but otherwise yeah just working my way up starting with this and with these pieces here So I have been digging into quite a lot of the remaining piles that I had left, but I was finding that after that bit, things began to slow down and I was a little bit back and forth and I kind of, I sort of still had too many piles remaining that went in sort of different bits of the puzzle. So what I did was I took all remaining piles of pieces and I put them together and I sorted them by shape. So these are the standard shape pieces on this board. So that's this shape at the top, this one at the bottom. And these are made up of the green, sort of bright green leaf pieces that I had, the flower pieces, the tree pieces, and um, some of these kind of pieces that I had separated as well. So there's a few of them. And they're also all the ones I had remaining in the unsorted greens box. The only other pieces I have left are in here. And these are the ones that are all these funny shapes with the convex and the concave uh, sides on them. So there aren't many of those. And these ones here are just a few little tiny sections where I actually have some put together, but I don't quite know where they go yet. So I've just put them in there alongside those. So that's it. These are all the pieces left to finish this puzzle. There is still one or two to go in the bottom section, a few there. A couple in that bottom corner under the lines, but there's maybe only around about 10 or something to go. So I'll no doubt put those in as I find them. I'm really just focused on the top of this puzzle now. So what I'm going to do is it's really just going to be a case of just picking away at them. Sometimes maybe just looking to see which kind of piece I'm looking for. Sometimes maybe just doing a little bit of testing one after the other. But I'm going to start by filling in these. Any areas where I have like a, a, a bump or a, a concave bit. Now I'm looking for one. I know there are one or two. <laughs> I'll probably struggle to find one now. There. So like, for example, there. Any pieces like that or any of the other ones, I'm going to start and do those first and just try and get those down. And then I'm just going to work away at some of these little gaps, maybe like fill in these bits fill in that bit perhaps and just get the pieces in one at a time until it is done.
So the puzzle is now taped and ready to go together. Um, the time has now come to put the two sections that I've finished uh, in this video together with section one, which I finished a wee while ago. So this, this is all of the sections that are built so far. There is 10,080 pieces of the wildlife puzzle here. Um, so I'm not even a third of the way through yet, which is just crazy, but um, I'm now going to put them together for you. I'm on my lounge floor today, but I think uh, after the next section or two, I think I'm maybe going to have to do this in a hall because my lounge isn't going to accommodate a puzzle much larger than this. Um, my handy helper, Grace, has come to join me as usual, no doubt. He'll make some trouble a wee bit later on. But uh, anyway, just for now, I'm going to put these sections together and we are going to look at what three sections of a 33,600 piece puzzle looks like. So enjoy. Okay, so just in case you don't remember what section one looks like, it was very, very heavily uh, dominated by green. Um, it's a lot of jungle going from top to bottom. And we've got, similarly to these other two sections I've done, loads and loads and loads of animals. So we've got butterflies, we've got snakes, we've got a leopard in the tree, we've got a little whatever that is up there. <laughs> we've got parrots, monkeys, loads of different types of birds. We've got a baboon. We've got a pair of lions and the back end of the big lion that you see in section two. And actually, I'm really looking forward to make to put in section two next to that so I can see that lion as a whole, because um, I only did his back end in the first section. And then at the bottom, we've got what looks like an anteater and some beautiful flowers. Little tiny bit of this snake, which you see a fair bit of in section two as well. And a little bit of that frog. So that was section one. So we're now gonna join sections two and three. And we'll see what this looks like. So here it is. We now have a complete pride of lions there. We've got a complete snake down at the bottom. That ball in the middle is now no longer in two halves. And we've got all the other animals that we had in section one and all the new animals in section two and three. So we can see from two and three, there's still quite a lot of green in section two, that middle section because the jungle's starting to open up and then section three, there's even less. So it was a lot less green heavy, which was a relief because doing a double section, I was nervous about that, nervous about the sheer amount of greens because there were just so many in section one. But anyway, that is the three sections together. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> I think that is beautiful. Wow. Right, so that's the end of the video. I have finished sections two and three of the wildlife puzzle and it is almost a third of the way done. Now, I am, <laughs> I'm undecided about whether or not to do a double section for the next part of this um, or whether or not to do a single section. Now, in terms of the, the puzzling difficulty level, I'm perfectly happy doing a double section. Having done these two, and initially worrying so much about the amount of green pieces. So there was still a lot of green, but it wasn't beyond my capacity to puzzle. So I don't regret doing the double section, but the next two sections, if I were to do those as a double, are, are even less green heavy, and it's a lot more water. So whether or not the water will be more problematic, I'm not sure, but there is certainly enough animals in this puzzle 
to give me so many bits to work with, so many sections. It certainly is a puzzle that you can sort and have a lot of areas that you can work on. So yes, in terms of a potential difficulty level, it's I would definitely do another double section. Really, what's making me slightly hesitant is just the length of time it takes to do it, because obviously doing a double section takes longer, it's almost 7,000 pieces, so, you know, it's a big, big puzzle, and I have to get my board out, you know, and it takes up most of the space in my puzzle room. So, logistically, it's not as easy to do, but it's certainly satisfying when you get it finished, and if I did do two sections next, I would be halfway through. I'd be halfway through the puzzle then, that would be five of the ten sections done, so very very tempting maybe you could leave a comment for me and let me know what you'd like to see me do would you like to see me do a single section for the next part or would you like to see me mix and do another double section i'll show you a picture of it just now from the poster this is what the double section would look like um and you can maybe just imagine cutting that in half uh if it was a single section and it would be just be the left hand uh area of the picture so yeah let me know what do you think i should do what would you like to see me do more importantly. So really going into how it was puzzling it, it was challenging. This is one of the most challenging puzzles I have done. I love that there's so much detail in it, I really do, and that does make it something that makes the puzzle really doable, like I was saying just a second ago. It, it really gives me loads of piles to sort into and manageable areas to puzzle, but what, it, what that also does is make it an extremely bitty puzzle to build. Now, I use the word bitty a lot in reference to this puzzle, and I don't really know what other word to use that describes it better. There are so many things going on in it. There's so many animals. You've got bigger animals, but you've got, like, tiny little animals, and they're just all over the place. So this bit in particular, I was a bit overwhelmed by just the sheer amount of kind of flying things, butterflies, dragonflies, and trying to place them in the puzzle before I'd really got it sort of filled out. It was so, so messy. It was It's a really messy kind of puzzle when you're first doing it. But then it's really, really satisfying watching it come together and fill up and watching the, the sort of the little floating islands become, you know, become part of the puzzle and then the gaps become like islands. So it's... That was the challenge for me. And also it's quite physically demanding because you get, because there are so many piles of pieces that I was working on, I would never fully complete a pile and before I moved on to the next one, so I always had a lot, a lot of leftovers, which meant quite a lot of gap filling sessions, which meant I was just back and forth and up and down and all around the table just all the time. And it is was quite physically exerting to do it. So there were times when I would just be like an hour filling out gaps and I'd have a lot of pieces in but it maybe wouldn't be quite as satisfying because even though I'd put so many pieces in they were all over the place so it just didn't really look like I'd made progress sometimes. <laughs> I think taking lots of pictures of this puzzle after each puzzling session just to kind of you know make myself secure in the knowledge that I have made progress is probably a good plan when I'm building it because sometimes there were times when I was just working on it for ages and then, you know, it just was not seeing any progress. But that's more of a mindset. That's kind of a psychological thing. So, yeah, I think I think more pictures, perhaps, with this one as I go along. But, yeah, so that's what I really found challenging. And I think that's part of the reason why, as well, the plan seemed to change so much with this puzzle. Now, I never really stick rigidly to a plan when I'm building a puzzle. I... I will kind of roll with the punches, if you see what I mean, and I will be flexible, but this puzzle... I, w I, I was often finding I would do the opposite to what I actually said. You know, I was going to do the lines towards the end because it was such a big area to do. I was going to leave the greens till the very last. I wasn't even going to touch them. So it th th just was... <laughs> this puzzle really has... The theme of this puzzle really has been 
just unpredictable. Like, no, never really knowing what's going to come next. But that's also been part of the fun with it as well. I've absolutely loved every second of doing it. Seeing just almost a third of this puzzle come together and how magnificent it is makes me so, so excited for the rest of it. I really cannot wait to do more of it. But I won't be doing any more until next year now. I'm going to do a few smaller puzzles. feel like I need to just, you know, calm down with the, the giant... <laughs> puzzles for at least a few weeks and just relax and enjoy Christmas but yeah this it was just incredible brilliant brilliant puzzle the sizes of this these three sections together just in case you were wondering about that I will let you know just now so far with these three sections the puzzle is 172 centimeters wide which is around about 68 inches by, it's quite square at this point. It'll be interesting to see how square it is. Uh, by 62 inches, which is 158 centimeters. So 172 by 158, which equates to 68 by 62 inches. So, a pretty big puzzle, bigger than me already. Other statistics I don't really have. I think the most obvious one would be how long it's taken me. And unfortunately, I have not been timing this puzzle. It's been very, been quite a busy time for me. I've had to have breaks from it for a fair while. And the fact that it was just such a big section to work on as well meant that I couldn't really focus on timing it. So I don't have timings, unfortunately, for this puzzle, but I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I really, really am looking forward to seeing the next section or two going on to this puzzle. So please, again, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a double section next and make it so that we're halfway through next time around, or if you'd prefer me just to work on the single section let me know what you'd like to see but in the meantime i would like to say thank you so so much for watching thank you for your patience waiting for these videos they do take a long time to do because there's always such a lot of footage but thank you for your patience i really hope that you've enjoyed the video and enjoyed the puzzle and um, if you've got any other questions or comments then please do let me know if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do subscribe and you'll see more of this awesome puzzle and loads of other puzzles as well. So thanks again very much. I wish you all happy puzzling and I will see you in the next one. Bye.